on this episode of Building Men, be the author of your day. Welcome to the Building Men Podcast. I'm your host, Dennis Meralda. Building Men is geared toward helping you become the strongest version of yourself spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Hello everyone, my name is Dennis Meralda. I am the host of the Building Men Podcast. I started this podcast back in July after, I don't know, I guess I was trying to figure myself out and find my purpose. Recently I posted a picture on Instagram and if you don't follow me, uh, consider following me on Instagram. It's building.men and I really struggled with um, posting this picture up on Instagram. Basically it was a before and after picture um, of my journey during the last, I don't know, six to eight months or so. And so the before picture was from April 30th, it was the end of April, and uh, if you if you look at it, basically it's just a just a sad looking picture. Um, I was overweight, I was depressed, I was really trying to find, you know, my space in the world, what I was doing with myself. Just nothing was was going my way, and you can really see it on the in the picture, just the, my expression. Um, and then I posted an after picture next to it. It was a, you know, front picture and then a, um, like a side view kind of picture. And while during the last six to eight months, um, I did, you know, lose a significant amount of weight. I got back in shape. Uh, it was more than that. It was more the, the mental and emotional weight that I was carrying for such a long time. It was really dragging me down. I was having a a tough time just, you know, getting up in the morning, getting motivated, finding any, um, you know, any kind of reason or purpose. And um, I really struggled with it. And I really, really struggled with it. And it's funny doing this podcast has helped me realize how much I struggled during that time. And in the podcast, the episodes that I'm doing and everything that I'm talking about is helping me. It's almost like a an, an individualized therapy session that I'm having with myself going through all these different things, thinking about mistakes that I made and how I handled things and just a ton of baggage that I was carrying, I guess. And so I recognized that I really needed to find myself again. And, and how I went about doing it was just these, these daily habits that I put into place every single day. And I, I, I guess I started slow and I started with a couple things and it it took a while, but I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to throw in the towel. At the time, I was how old am I now? I guess I was 43. I guess I just turned 44. I was 43 at the time, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to throw in the towel right now. I kind of had this moment where I made a decision that okay, line in the sand. You need to, you know, sack up and you know do it, move forward now. And so I also started to think about how I used to let my day be controlled, how I used to let others really dictate how I showed up every single day. And so I also think about this. We're heading towards the end of 2020, which has been like one of the most um, unbelievable, um, difficult, inspiring, uh, challenging years in, I mean, in recent memory. But um, I also thought that people wait till the beginning of January to make changes in their life. They wait, okay, I'm going to make a New Year's resolution. I'm going to start on January 1st or January 2nd. And now I'm going to change my habits, change my ways, do something different to make, um, to make an impact, to make myself better, to change something that I'm doing. But I'm going to say, well, like, why do we have to wait until January 1st or January 2nd to start something new? So I record this episode on December 18th. You have, you know, 13 days before the end of this year. Why not start right now? Start today. Start tomorrow. Make a change in what you're doing if you're not happy with where you are currently situated in life or if you see room for improvement. Why not start today? There was a study done that a new habit takes anywhere from 18 to 160 days. That's the kind of range 
of you know daily repetition for a new habit to take hold with the median number being 66 days. So if we know that it might take a few weeks to a few months for a habit to become just part of what you do, part of your routine, why are we going to wait until January 1st? Why not start today? I remember going um, to the gym where I was living in Bordentown. I remember going to the gym in the beginning of January, um, and I had a membership there, and just the, you would get this influx of people on January 2nd into the gym, and I was always an early riser going to the gym back in the day, and I just remember this influx of people that came in in January, and then by you know beginning of February, it was a it was a ghost town again, and be, and it's it's because it's hard. It, it takes it takes time for a new habit to, you know, to really become a part of who you are and what you do on a daily basis. But it's worth it, you know, even though it's challenging and it's difficult. That that's really worth it to make those changes. And think about your day. Well, so let's think about it. We'll go from like a macro level from how long it takes for a new habit to, to take hold to even just thinking about our day. The title of this episode is Be the Author of Your Day. So think about how you spend the 24 hours of your day. Think about how much time you do things that are just for leisure or for entertainment and how many things are honestly kind of helping you become better in a specific area of your life or achieve your goals. Think about how much time you're spending watching television, how how much time you're on Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever it is, and how much time you're spending on social media. Think about it. I heard a study or um, a stat that 86% of people are on their phones within 10 minutes of waking up in the morning. 86% of people are on their phones within the first 10 minutes of waking up. And think about if that percentage applies to you, if you're one of that 86% of people who do that. So when you start your day by going onto your phone, your day begins with someone else with their thoughts, with their opinions, with their ideas, with their negativity. So it's, it's, it's news that's starting your day, you know, things that are going on in the world with conspiracy and pandemic and politics and it's notifications of, of you know, different things that other people are doing in their lives and their ideas and their opinions or it's negativity. So when you're on your phone within the first 10 minutes of the day and to start your day, you're letting someone else's agenda control how your, how your mind is to start your day. It puts you in a place of, of deficit almost when you, you start your day on this negative journey. And it's it's sometimes it's tough to get out of that. It's really tough to pull yourself out of a, that when when your day is started with, with negativity. Or if you check your email to start the day, like, oh, I, you know, someone needs me to do this or that at work or whatever the case may be. But conversely, if you start your day on your terms, even if something trips you up, you know, in the morning or in the early afternoon, well, guess what? You already started your day on your terms in a positive state of mind that you want it to be and not the way that somebody else, you know, kind of pushed out to you. So I recently connected with this guy. His name is Luke Mace. Um, his Instagram is Luke.mace if you want to check him out. He's a life coach, a bodybuilder, just an overall badass. He lives in Great Britain and we connected earlier this week, um, just speaking about, you know, our own individual journeys. I'm going to interview him on the podcast in the next couple of weeks, but he just posted on Instagram that if you wake up one hour earlier every single day over the course of a year, it equates to one extra month of eight hour days. And that just blew my mind. Thinking about you know, wake up one hour earlier every day, you get the return is an extra month of eight hour days, all the things that you say that you want to do that you don't have time for. Oh, I'd love to, I'd love to, you know, run every day. I'd love to work out. I'd love to write. I'd love to meditate. I would love to, you know, listen to audiobooks or read or listen to a couple new podcasts to get inspired by or learn from, but I just don't have the time. Well, you know what? Get up earlier, get up, get up an hour earlier. Well, there you go. We just found you some time there. Even if it's not an hour earlier every day, maybe it's 
a half hour earlier, or 15 minutes earlier. The point is the cumulative impact of getting up earlier will pay off in the long run. So think about being the author of your day. Start your day a little bit earlier. Not a big deal. It's and Once you do it for, you know, a month, two months, three months, it just becomes what you do. And when it becomes what you do, it becomes that daily habit that makes such a huge impact in your overall health. So here's where I'm going to go with this episode. I'm definitely an acronym guy. So here is how I am going to remember how to be the author of my day. So there's going to, I'm going to say there's going to be five big ideas to keep in mind, and I'm going to use the acronym HABIT. So I actually got up this morning and I was like, okay, I knew I was going to record the podcast episode about being the author of our collective days. But I wanted there to be something that was a little bit more tangible. So if you need to jot this idea down, the word habit is going to be how we're going to think about it. So the H is going to be health. And so when we think about being the author of our day, let's think about just making healthy choices. So maybe that's getting up a little bit earlier. Um, You know, when we think about the hours of our day. Let's also think about health with the things that we put into our body and the things that we put out of our body. So what we put into our body. One thing I'll absolutely suggest is that you increase the amount of water that you're drinking every day. This made a huge impact on my overall health was drinking a lot lot more water. And um, the other thing is I would suggest drinking water as soon as you wake up in the morning. The first thing you do is just have like eight ounces of water. Um, someone told me that the correct amount of water to have is if you take your body weight and you divide it by two and then add another 20 ounces. So at the time when I started doing that, say I was 250 pounds. So it was 250 divided by two, 125 plus 20. So I was drinking 145 ounces of water a day, every single day. And so maybe you have, you know, for most people, you know, for, Um, it's maybe a little bit less than a gallon of water you should be drinking today, something along those lines. But if you think about that, like just being very conscious of, of consuming more water every single day, that's a big way to, to increase your overall health. The other thing I'm not going to go through and say like, Oh, be on this specific diet program or, or whatever. I'm not, that's not my area of expertise. But one thing I will tell you is having lost 40 pounds, over the course of six months or so, what I started to do was I started to just, you know, shrink the amount of time that I was eating during the day. What I used to do is I used to get up and eat an apple with peanut butter. And then I would, you know, an hour later, I would, you know, um, have eggs and toast. And then a couple hours later, I would have, you know, I thought I was eating healthy, you know, maybe I'd have like beef jerky and like, you know, almonds, and then I'd have lunch, and then I'd come home and I'd have a snack and I'd have dinner and then I'd have a couple beers. And before you know it, I mean, one, I was, I was taxing my body by eating from five in the morning to like eight or nine at night. Um, But the things that I was putting in my body weren't the best choices as well. So one thing I sort of do was just cut down on the eating window. So I mean, for me, this isn't for everyone but I'm pretty regimented with it. I don't eat my first, I don't put anything in my mouth really until noon every day. So I get up at five. The first thing that I eat is at noon. It's not, it's not easy. It's not for, for everyone, but that's just what I do every single day. Um, and the other thing I think about is the, the impact that that has when you when your body is constantly working to digest food all day long, it's not able to focus on other things that you're doing. And so it takes a lot for your body to, to digest food all the time. And the, the shorter amount of time that your body has to work to digest food, the better it is for your overall health. So it's just something that I do not for everyone, like I said. I also think about eating things that have one ingredient, you know, things that grow from the ground or things that had a heartbeat. I like to eat, um, you know, for, for me again, um, and people that know me are going to, they can probably tell you exactly what I'm going to say right now as far as things that I try to eat on a regular basis. I eat blueberries almost every single day. I eat macadamia nuts every single day. They're really, really good for you. I try to eat dates every single day. I try to eat an avocado every single day. I try to have some kind of like a leafy green like spinach or something or um, you know, some kind of a green vegetable every single day, maybe broccoli or something like that. I like to have sweet potatoes and some kind of a 
um, you know, protein, you know, ground. I started eating ground bison is really good. Um, chicken, ground beef, steak. Like I just have some kind of a protein or, or a fish as well. So um, those are things that I'm, I'm eating on a, on a regular basis. It's, again, it's not for everyone. But what I try to do is I think about eating things that grow or things that were alive or things that had a heartbeat. Um, so I don't eat a lot of like processed things. I try to stay away from, you know, unrefined sugar and, um, and those kinds of things. So the other thing that you can do when we're thinking about what we're putting into our bodies is if, you, if you're going to snack, you know, if you love your Cheez-Its, if you love pretzels, if you love chips, if you love, you know, um, Tostitos, whatever it is, instead of just grabbing the bag and sitting on the couch and woofing half the bag down, you know, put some in a bowl and sit down and like, all right, so I, this is my indulgence. I'm going to have some snacks, put it in a bowl and, and, and eat it. And then that's it. You're done. Instead of sitting with the bag. I, I know that I did that for such a long time. I'd sit on the couch with a bag of something and goddamn, before you know it, the bag was gone and <laughs> where the hell did it go? And then there's this feeling of guilt that's associated with it, um, in the long run. So that's just a little bit about, you know, kind of what we put into our body. Again, I'm not an expert in that area. I just know that Doing that over time really, really worked for me. The second part is your output. You know, so it's what you put in your body and then what you put out of your body. And I would say do something physical every single day. Do something physical. What worked for me, I started with push-ups and squats every single day. No matter what, even if I did another workout, I had to do 150 push-ups and 150 squats every single day. And it, you know, in the beginning it was really challenging, really, really challenging to get that done. I wouldn't do it all at once. I would split it up. So say I did, you know, sets of, you know, 10 or sets of 20 or 25 or something like that over the course of the day. But cumulatively, that's what I would have to accomplish every single day. Maybe that's not for you. Maybe it's, you know, you're going to go for a walk every single day. You're going to go for a jog every day. Maybe you play basketball every day. Um, but just something physical, lift weights, do yoga, um, who knows, maybe you just want to, you know, turn off the lights and dance in your kitchen, um, but something physical, maybe something to get your heart beat, your heart racing a little bit faster than it normally would. Something that worked for me really well was also, uh, was sprinting. Um, if, if you're not, if you haven't done any physical activity for a long time, I wouldn't recommend starting there. But if you're, if you're in decent shape and you can, you know, you can jog or you can run a little bit, try, you know, adding in one or two sprints. It, it really, um, get your, get your, um, your heart racing. The other thing, it, it, like it tells your, tells your mind when your body's putting that much out, it tells your mind that you are someone that needs to be able to run and, and it needs to, your testosterone needs to be at a higher level uh, because, you know, physiologically that's how our bodies were coded basically to, to, you know, to chase down our dinner or to run away from a bear or, or something like that. So when you, when you think about sprinting, it, it really can impact how your your um, body produces testosterone. Again, this is just coming from my own experience. So I try to do sprints a couple times a week. Uh, they suck. You're sucking wind at the end, but I'll tell you what, you definitely get this feeling when you're done, like, you know, you just really accomplish something. So again, the H part, the H in our acronym for habit is, is health. What we put in and then what we put out. The letter A for the habit acronym is articulate. And I was struggling with which, what word to use for the letter A. I was thinking, should it be act? Should it be accountable? Should it be assess? Um, but, but I thought articulate was a good one, and here's why. Again, what I try to do is, before I go to bed at night, I think about what um, what my intentions are for the next day. So before I go to bed, I think about, okay, you know, what are things that I need to, that I need to get down, um, on a calendar or in a journal or something like that, that need to be accomplished the following day. One thing that that does is that when I wake up in the morning, I know, okay, I've, I have some things that I already know that I have to be able to do that, that next day. Um, the other thing that it does is it helps me sleep a little bit better. It gets, instead of my mind racing, like, oh wait, I have to do this, that, or the other, 
I've already thought about it. I was intentional about it. Like, okay, these are the, the tasks that I need to complete tomorrow. So that's one thing that it does. When you're able to art articulate, it, it, it gives you an opportunity to, you know, be the author of your day. You know, physically writing down or typing um, out your day, it gives you this idea of being in charge of it. Again, people who know me are going to laugh at this one. So I am a huge proponent of um, Brendan Burchard. He is, he's really like a, this business genius. He's a, he's a coach. He, he's an influencer. He inspires people. And he has this thing called the High Performance Planner. And it is, it's kind of like um, a calendar slash journal. And it is the way that, that I start every day as well. So when I wake up, um, first thing I do is after I suck down a glass of water, I, um, I open up this High Performance Planner. And basically, it's, it's setting your intentions for the day. So it kind of makes you think about what's the message that you have for yourself for the day? What's the, you know, the overall message? It asks you, what kind of person do you want to be today? What, is there anything that you think might trip you up today? How can you step outside of your comfort zone for the day today? Um, what's a big idea or big task that's in front of you that you really want to go after today? Then it asks, you know, if there were, there were a couple words that can describe the type of person that I want to be today. What are those words? And then there's timestamp things where you can go through this uh, planner and kind of fill out, okay, these are the things I need to do at this specific time during the course of the day. And so for today, the message to myself was carpe diem, seize the day. I'm given how many hours awake and alive today, so I really want to take every single moment today and really experience it and, and be the best me that I can be during the course of today. And then the cool thing about this journal is to to come back to it at the end of the day and then you, you look back on your day. Okay, what went well today? Was I able to accomplish the task that I set forth for myself for today? And did I live those words, those, you know, those things that I wanted to live? So if my thing, what, what feelings do I want to have today? I want to, I want to feel love. I want to feel gratitude, passion. Um, I want to feel peace. I want to feel happiness. I want to feel fulfillment. Was I able to feel those things during today? And if not, why? Where did I kind of slip up during the day? And what could I have done to make today even better? So it's this idea of holding yourself accountable for every single day. Not for everyone, but for me, this has made such a huge impact in just articulating what I want the day to look like, sound like, and feel like. And then at the end of the day, coming back and really looking at it, like, did it, did it work? Was I able to accomplish these things that I set forth for myself? And if I didn't, all right, well, then what can I do tomorrow to make it better? And at the beginning of this, when I said, hey, you know, set forth your intentions before you go to bed. So now I'm ready to go for tomorrow. What do I need to do tomorrow to make it even better than today was? So the, the second would be to, the second letter is A, and that's articulate. The B in habit is breathe. I was never someone who did any mind work, mindfulness, mind strategies, anything like that. I started in April when I started meditating every single day. And it was really challenging at first. I really couldn't get into meditation. I would, I would, you know, I downloaded this app called Headspace. And it's, well, by the way, I'm like, I'm not affiliated with Headspace or anything. I mean, by all means, if you're listening Headspace and you want to advertise on the Building Men podcast, reach out. I'd be happy to, to talk to you. But I'm not affiliated with Headspace. That's what I use. My, my meditation app is Headspace. And so after I journal in the morning or I set forth my day in the morning, I do, you know, either a 10 or 15 minute meditation. The way that Headspace is set up is, you know, there's a beginner's course, an intermediate course, a pro level course, but then there's all these different mini courses. One is about dealing with grief. One is about creativity. One is about balance in your life. One is about, um, you know, sports performance, um, anxiety, coping with depression. So there's all these like mini courses along with the meditation app. Um, that I've really, really enjoyed. So basically what it is, is it's, it's a guided meditation that kind of walks you through how do you get out of your head? How do you realize that you are not your thoughts? How do you understand that things that 
come into your head. They don't, that, that's not you. That's a thought that you have and it teaches you strategies on how to deal with those things. To me, that was such a game changer. When I mentioned in the beginning, my transformation from April until now, so much of what I was dealing with was in my head and I just needed to figure out how to, how to understand those things, how to understand what I was dealing with in my head and how do I, how do I cope with it in a healthy way and use my mind to serve me rather than be a, you know, an enemy. How do I use my mind to be one of my allies and help me understand, you know, how to handle difficult situations as they come up. So a big part of meditation is breathing, you know, just understanding the importance of taking deep kind of, um, like soothing breaths almost. And during the course of the day, as things trip you up, as anxious, you know, moments um, enter, as stressful situations um, pop up and you're encountering them, even just taking 10 seconds and just breathing, taking five really deep breaths where you breathe in for a few seconds, you hold it for a few seconds, and then you breathe out for a few seconds. Just that act of Taking a few moments and breathing can really, really help settle you down and help you kind of understand, you know, that this is whatever I'm dealing with, this will pass, the sun will rise tomorrow, and I'm going to be okay. So the the third letter in our word, our acronym habit is B and it's for breathe. The next one is I and I use the word inspiration here. So it's really important for you to find uh, people that can inspire you, that you can look up to, that you can you can hear their words or see their messages or um, or be you know captivated by what they're saying. It's 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 having a mentor, it's having a teacher, it's having a coach. You know, it doesn't have to be someone that you're you know you know personally. Maybe it's someone that you you listen to um, you listen to their podcast. You listen to an audio book. You listen to them on the on you know on a radio station. You you read their materials. You whoever it is, we're just to have someone that you can um, can learn from to be inspired by. And what that does is you know you, you it gets you out of this stagnant state. It gives you an opportunity to to be in a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset. When you're in a fixed mindset, like, okay, I'm going to go through my day. Um, you know, maybe I watch some sports. Maybe I see what's on the news a little bit. You know, maybe I watch a few shows on Netflix or whatever, but most of those things are not pushing you to expand your, your mind and, and to grow mentally. So what I would challenge you to do, the I inspiration is to find something that you can, you can connect to that will help you become better. Think about something that you want to learn more about. Before we talked about, you know, how many extra hours you can get in your day just by waking up a little bit earlier. You get up a half hour earlier and maybe you want to learn about, I don't know, architecture. Maybe you want to learn about how to juggle. Maybe you want to learn about, I don't, you know, maybe there's an ancient philosophy you want to understand more about. Whatever it is, you know, just taking that time during the day to take care of your mind in a way that you want to to learn something, to become stronger, better in a specific area. So the I is inspiration, to find someone, something that inspires you and to dig into it, to delve into it and to, you know, to try to become better. If there's anything that I can do in that respect to kind of help you find your way on that path, please reach out to me. The T is thankful. And so this is this is the time during the day, and it could be you know sprinkled in throughout the day, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, sending a text or an email or a phone call or whatever to you know express your gratitude. Sometimes it's just like in your mind, you know, one being thankful for, you know, being alive on the planet today. You know, just appreciating that you are here and the, the good things that you have in your life, and you know, then if it if it if the moment captivates you, to let other people know that you're thankful for them, that you're grateful for them being in your life. If you think about if you didn't have an opportunity to, to see a loved one or to, to express how you felt, like how what that would feel like, that you didn't have an opportunity to share what 
what you felt to someone or, or felt about someone. So if you do have those opportunities, take those opportunities. Tell people that you're grateful for, that you're grateful for them. Tell people that they've had an impact on your life or, you know, maybe something in the past that, that they've done that you can connect to and say, you know what, this person really helped me through this difficult situation. Let me tell them that right now. One thing when, you, when you're when you experiencing that or when you're expressing gratitude and thankfulness, it makes you feel better. It certainly does. So the T in habit is to just to be thankful. You know, every single day, just take a moment to just be thankful for who you are, what you have, even if you're experiencing something challenging or difficult right now, being thankful for the good things in your life. And I definitely think the positivity and thankfulness attracts more of the same. I, I honestly, from my experience, when I was going through difficult times, I feel like I was attracting difficult times to me because of my mindset. And I wasn't thankful for what I had or what I was experiencing. I was constantly looking at the negative aspects in life. And once I shifted and I started focusing on the good things that were happening and the good people and, and everything that I had around me um, that was positive, it it helped me understand that a little bit deeper and in and made me made me feel better moving forward. So being the author of your day revolves around kind of setting daily habits. And the daily habits that we talked about were health, articulate, breathe, inspiration, and being thankful. H-A-B-I-T. You incorporate those things every single day well, one, you are certainly the author of your day. You are deciding how you want your day to run, how you want your your ship to sail. You are definitely you're the captain there, and it also will it'll have some long term benefits for you. It, it's not an overnight thing. Like I mentioned at the start, you know, changing your daily habits it for it to become part of your routine. It, it does take a while, but listen, you know. You have, you have the ability to do it. You have the ability to change those things. Even if you start with just one thing, start, start with one thing tomorrow, whatever it is. Tomorrow, get up 15 minutes earlier and do something positive for yourself. Tomorrow, try meditating. Tomorrow, go for a walk, go for a jog, do some push-ups, do some squats. Tomorrow, write in a journal articulate something that you want to do tomorrow, express gratitude or, or thankfulness. One thing even, just do one thing a little bit different. You'll see the benefits of it. It does take time. Change is not easy. It's not, but it's worth it. So that's what I have for you today, everyone. I appreciate you listening to the Building Men podcast. If you haven't done so already, please consider leaving a five-star rating, and then writing a review if it's on Apple Podcasts about building men. I would also encourage you to subscribe or follow me on Instagram. It's building.men. Reach out to me via email, buildingmencoach at gmail.com. I don't know if this is going to be the last episode of 2020 or not. I think I'm probably going to do one more, but if I don't, I wanted to Thank everyone. Just express my gratitude to everyone who subscribes to this podcast and listens to it. This is definitely a journey for me. It's something that um, it really is important to me now. And and just to hear stories that um, there are people out there, you know, in different states and even in different countries right now that are listening that have gotten something out of my words. It's it's truly humbling to know that something that I am saying or sharing with other people has had an impact on, on them. So I just wanted to express my gratitude to anyone who has listened and subscribed to the building men podcast. You have truly changed my life by doing so. So thank you. And I will see you next time on building men.